All right, so today I need to change indicators on my Vanelli for the second time in a week. Let me show you. So the original indicators, um, one of the back ones, one of the back ones had stopped working. Don't know why, but it just wasn't working, and it wasn't the wiring or anything else. It was just it was the indicator. So I bought these aftermarket, um, aftermarket cheapy indicators and put them on. Um, but let me just start up the bike and I'll show you the problem I have now. Right. I'll turn the lights off as well. I don't know if I can pick this up with the camera, but the lights just pulse, the indicators just pulse ever so gently all the time. Now when I turn on the indicator, it's flashing really quickly. Yes, that could just be, I might just need to get a new relay and change that. Um, but the camera isn't picking it up too much, but but they're very faintly just pulsing, just w even when they're turned off, when, when, when the engine is running. So, um, so I've got, these, the, these are the original style. So I've got, I've still got, the one on this side was working okay. It was this side I checked, it was this side that, was, that wasn't working. So I got another, I got another one from the Rikers. It was only 22 quid. Um, I don't know why I just didn't do that to start with anyway. So I need to, yeah, put this back on that side and just put the one that was originally on there back on there and get rid of these uh, cheap Chinese crappy ones. Just realised the irony in that. Yes, cheap Chinese crappy ones on a. It's a Chinese built motorbike, isn't it? But yeah. Nevertheless, those aftermarket indicators are rubbish. So I guess the first thing to do is make sure this indicator is actually working. Um, I've got the full wires and connections as well. So um, yeah, I don't need to splice or do anything with any wires which is good. So let's just pop the saddle off. Put that down there. Pop the saddle off and the wiring for the indicators is underneath here. So I can pull that out as best I can. Right, which side is which? Oh, there we go. Right. So we know our indicator is working. So it's just a 12 mil spanner in there to loosen that bolt off. There we are. Leasey, leasey, leasey. Right, now what I'm going to do, because, because this is getting underneath, I don't want to have to take all of this back part off. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to actually snip that wire there, tape those onto it, and just pull that through. I think that's probably the easiest way of doing that. So, um, Let's just, you know, scissors will do it. So we'll cut that there. Take this old one off. I'll keep these indicators, they might be handy for, um, if I've got another project or just need a spare indicator for anything, I suppose, to be handy for that. That can come off. Right. And a new indicator. Take that off. And then I've got a washer there. Washer on that side. Yeah. 
So I've put that indicator on. And now what I'm going to do is just take those wires together and just pull it through that way. I think that's the easiest way of it's very tight going through there. I wonder if we'll be able to. So after a lot of faffing around, routing that wire through and up to here, um, yeah, I think we finally got there. So just need to get those these plugged in good and tight here on this side. And success. So now what I need to do next is just tidy up those wires. Get a little table tie, tie, tidy up those little wires, tighten the bolt in there, and I need to change that side as well. Oh, so you just need to splice the end of these wires and join them together. When I put the aftermarket indicators on, I just cut the wire here to put this one on. Oh, that's loose. I'll look at that in a bit. Um, yeah, I just cut the wires here because, like I saw, it said it's quite tightly packed underneath there. Right, just need to join those together now. So I use these um, soldering connectors splice wires together. These are really good, really, really good. Um, this box of all of these, there was a lot more, I've used lots out of it. Um, yeah, but this box of these costs eight pounds on, on Amazon. Um, or you can go down to Halfords and buy two like that for eight pounds. So two like that from eight pounds from, from Halfords or a whole box full of them like that from Amazon for the same price. Right, I'm not sure how well I'm going to be able to film this, but basically what you do is you put one in one side. Same the other side. There's a bit of solder there on the inside. And then all you need to do with a lighter or any sort of flame really you just melt melt the solder inside that um sleeve that goes round it the sleeve then that goes round it as well just melt that as well and it'll hold it there good and let's get that bit out it'll hold that good and solid And then that melts and that holds it good and secure and you've got a good a good connection there. Right. Let's just do the other one. That on that side. That in there, a little bit of heat on it. And then the solder inside melts, hardens again then to give a really good solid connection. And that is not going anywhere. Just let it all melt back in again. Here we are. So ideally I'd like to have just a little bit of a little small cable tie, but in the absence of a cable tie I'm just going to use a little bit of tape, a little insulating tape just to hold, keep that wire in place there. There we are. 
That's neat enough. And then I'll just do the same around the other side. So when I was fiddling around underneath the seat there, I spotted a little toolkit in there. I didn't realise I had one in here. I didn't think there was a toolkit on this bike, but yeah. There it is. That's a nice little well, it's a bit of a bugger to put that back on. So that's a nice little useful little thing to have. Didn't realise that was in there. Excellent.